This is the Catholic Daily Journal for Tuesday, March the 19th, 2019. It's St. Joseph's Day. Joseph of Nazareth was probably edging toward the age of 40 or so by the time that we meet him in the Gospels of St. Matthew and St. Luke. We know this because of the extensive writing of early Christians who chronicled all sorts of interesting facts, like the names of the two thieves crucified with Jesus or the specific places that this or that sermon were given. Joseph was an accomplished and a settled carpenter in his native Nazareth, and he had a few living children. He was old enough to be a widower, but young enough to marry again. He was young enough that he was still around when Jesus was 12 and he taught the teachers in the temple, but he was old enough that he was almost certainly dead by Jesus' baptism in the Jordan River. Mary would have been closer to 14 or so when she was engaged to Joseph, but probably a little too young for him to, quote, take her into his home. Now, this is not unusual for cultures with arranged marriages. The promise of marriage, or the betrothal, allows the families to be bound together, even if the couple themselves are not ready for married life. Joseph seems to be a good stepfather. He's obedient to his dreams. He's humble enough not to make a scene when that would have been the normal and reasonable things to do in that time. And he's capable of raising Jesus to be a skilled worker, which requires discipline, even while he knows that this boy is something utterly unique in history. St. Joseph is particularly beloved of the Italians and is their special patron. He's also the patron of fathers, of stepfathers, and of men, generally speaking. Now, today was traditionally a holy day of obligation, but today it is definitely a feast day. And so happy St. Joseph's Day. In much less interesting news, today is the birthday in 1979 of C-SPAN. C-SPAN is a broadcast of the workings of the House of Representatives in Washington, D.C. While it is not the most exciting channel on TV, it's genuinely important because it gives all of us the freedom to see what our elected representatives say and how they vote. In an era when the news media is surely untrustworthy and unquestionably partisan in one way or the other, C-SPAN may well be the only genuine way to see what our politicians say and do without deceptive sound and video editing and without selective reporting in which those facts which suit an opinion are presented while those which don't are ignored. Interestingly, C-SPAN came online on the 84th anniversary to the day of the first successful cinematograph recording. In 1895, Auguste and Louis-Jean Lumiere invented a video recording camera. Now, of course, we all know that Léon Bouly had done this three years earlier, and Edison had done the same thing. But the Lumiere brothers took Edison's basic idea and Boulet's tech and added one key feature. They made the thing capable of projecting the film onto a wall or a screen. And that meant that unlike Edison's kinetoscope, which could only be watched by one person at a time through a tiny little hole, the cinematograph made it possible for groups of people to share the experience. Fast forward to Netflix or HBO and the internet, and the shared experience of home cinema is primed for one heck of a 125th birthday party. Finally, it's the birthday of Wyatt Earp, born Monmouth, Illinois in 1848. He was a gambler, a hunter, a gold prospector, a professional boxing referee, and he owned several saloons with attached brothels. He's remembered for his work as a lawman in Tombstone, Arizona, where he ended up in the most famous gunfight of all time, the shootout at the OK Corral. He and his brothers Virgil and Morgan and his friend Doc Holliday were on the side of the law with the five Cochise Cowboys on the side of the outlaws. Two of the bad guys died and three of the good guys were wounded, but Wyatt Earp walked away unharmed. He died at the ripe old age of 80 in Los Angeles, California in 1929. The Catholic Daily Journal was supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.